glad to be back. I enjoy coming down here, have a lot of fun. Since Gerald called me so early this morning, I thought, well, what am I going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about the enemy and what God can do with the enemy. As you all know, I've been to Mardi Gras, and I'll guarantee you the enemy's down there. He's all over the place. But I will tell you one thing. God's a lot stronger than he is. I've been going to Mardi Gras probably for close to 18 years. And I will say, this was my best Mardi Gras ever. The way God was working this year down there, it baffled all of our minds. To talk to the people was so easy, it was unreal. To pray with the people, it was unreal. And I mean many walks of life. People from Portugal, France, London, and the Ukraine. And it was just every day God was opening doors and using people. And it's so great whenever that happens because it puts excitement in our hearts. And we want to tell someone. A song that we listen to down here on Monday nights a lot is I'm nobody wanting to tell everybody all about somebody that saved my soul. I'm telling you, you can preach that song on the street. To go down there, we just don't go down. There's one thing we do way before that. You prepare yourself. And we're going to be looking at 2 Timothy this morning, starting with chapter 2. I'll give you a second. Because this is what we learn before you go anywhere. Says you, therefore, my sons, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. That's what No Greater Love Ministry was all about. It was taking the gospel and put it in the hands of faithful men and sending them out. And believe it or not, every Sunday we come, every Wednesday we come, Gerald or someone else is doing exactly what that says, teaching you the gospel. Learn to, to work and to share Christ with other people. When I very first was saved, God had spoke to me to go into the streets. I had no idea how to go about it, but God told me to do it. So I searched around and searched around, and God led me to a, a place called Sowers of Seed. And I ordered these little these little bitty Bibles. And also I got some for the children with the little smiley faces. And that's what I started with first. It was fun. Even though I really didn't know what I was doing. But God always made a way. Because I was faithful and just to try it. And that's what we all got to be. You know, God doesn't always call the called. He'll call the unqualified and train him. And that's what we all got to learn to do. Because while we're standing in line, maybe to order something at a fast food restaurant, 
or were sitting at, the, at, at a table in a restaurant. How many times have you seen a waitress when you're sitting down come up to the table and, and look kind of down in her heart? Did you ever ask her, is everything all right or are you having a problem? You know, a lot of times they'll open up to you. You can always say, well, can I pray for you? Tell you what, that's street ministry, guys. And God wants us to do that. He's teaching up everybody. I'm talking from young to old. There's no discrepancy on how old you are to go out and do something. The most minute things can help someone. In Proverbs, it tells us that laughter is like medicine. How many of us like a, like a good joke and laugh and, or see something funny and just excites you? That laughter will make you feel better. It does me. And it does a lot of other people. We have to learn to take in what our pastor's given to us, what he's feeding us, of how to go out, how to do things. Because you may run into somebody that nobody else could really talk to. might be you. That's like whenever I was in the Ukraine and I was in the hospital. I don't know if anybody else would have been able to talk to that 88-year-old man that was in the bed beside me. And I contributed to it that God wanted me in that place. That's why I was in the hospital. At first, I was kind of aggravated about it. But once I realized about the, the old gentleman, it excited me. And it took all that kind of mean and hateful things away because nobody wants to be in a hospital. Nobody wants to be sick. But that's a heck of a way to train somebody up, but I'll do it again. Paul is who wrote that, the Apostle Paul. We all know who he was, Saul. God changed his life and made him a new creation. And that's the main thing. There's a lot of people out there that need to be a, a new creation. And believe it or not, each and every one of you sitting here today might be the only way for that one person to become a new creation by knowing how to talk to them through their hard times sometimes a gentle smile or sometimes you just say is everything okay believe it or not whenever we're down in our dumps and I, I'm there a lot and all I got to do is cry out to Jesus but what I usually do Set, fight through it on my own till finally I realized I got to look to him. And he says, why didn't you ask me sooner? I think we've all been there. <laughs> but God's good and he's gracious. He'll do many, many things for us and with us. Like those little books. The first scripture I remembered is in the middle of this book. Luke eleven twenty eight. It says, Blessed are they that hear the word of God, and this is the most important thing coming, and keep it. How many times do we forget where we're at sometimes? We all do, I think. Guarantee you I have. I've got upset, I've got bad. Then you gotta pay that price. <laughs> Cause nobody wants to humble themselves and ask for forgiveness. But boy, when you do, it's all so much better. Like with our trip this year. It was a wonderful and great trip. Our camp chaplain had an accident on the way down. 
He rolled his car and totaled it out. He got out without a scratch. Got him another vehicle. Come on to Mardi Gras. And he said, and I'm proud to be here. Well, Mardi Gras got over. He went home. Two days after he was home, he was coming from church. Had a heart attack and died. To all of us that was in that camp, it, it really set within our hearts because, tell you what, he was a great camp chaplain. How many of you have ever seen the, 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 the movie, uh, uh, The 300? The men with the Spartans, with the shields and the, the swords. 300 of them held off uh, the Persian army for, oh man, a long time. That's what he was teaching us. He says we have to have our shield of faith. And the way the Spartans mainly want everything... They joined together. They'd come together as one. They'd lock their shields so the arrows couldn't harm them. That's what we need to start doing. We need to come together and start locking our shields so them old arrows from the, from the enemy doesn't affect us or bother us and can hurt us. This year, it was all about the sword, the sword of the Spirit. That sword of the Spirit can break anything that the old enemy throws at us. This is the devil's place. But there's one thing about it. There's going to be a day come when this ain't going to be the devil's place no more. All that's going to disappear. Probably in a twinkling of an eye. And how wonderful that's going to be. Because for those of us that have Christ in our heart, are never going to have a worry, never going to have a sorrow, never have a pain. And you know what's going to be awesome? Scripture says God is going to wipe away our tears. To have the Father wipe away my tears and have them no more. That's a pretty good Father. Especially for all the things I've done in my life. But there was one thing about it. 2 Corinthians 5.17, it's my favorite scripture. Therefore, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's the new beginning in our hearts when we ask Christ in. But whenever we do that, he gives us... How many of us has had passions? Something that was really on your heart that you really thought you needed or something you really needed to do. God will grant you the things that you really, really want. You may not get them real quick, but eventually they'll come along. Believe it or not, whenever I first asked Christ into my life, I still wanted, he had me wanting to witness, but I was a little shy, more than a little, I was quite a bit. But he kept working on it and making it better, better, and better. And like I say, he'll put you in situations and in spots you have no idea when he might speak to you. How many times has he spoke to us and we didn't listen? Yeah, it's happened. <laughs> There's one thing about it, though. If you don't do it, he's going to find somebody that will. And the bad part is, boy, if you do it, what he says, guarantee you he's going to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. 
because my father loves me so he wants me to have everything that I need. Do you notice that need? <laughs> How many times do we want something? Boy, that's me. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> And we go out and we get it. And then we go, my lands, what have I done? <laughs> How long is it going to take me to pay for this? <laughs> but if we stand true to him, he'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Because my God's a way maker. And he's a way maker in every one of our lives. The many things that uh, he does for people in this world. How he brings people up. And like I've said many times, he's used some of the most worst people you could ever imagine to do his jobs. Like the song said, Moses was shy, so he had to give him uh, yeah, you knew him. I just lost his name. <laughs> and then you got poor little, uh, that little bitty ruddy shepherd boy, name of David. Let me ask you a question. Would you go to a sword fight with a rock? He did. That's what I say. God is a way maker. He finds ways that we can live a, beautiful and wonderful life he wants us to have life and have it more abundant most of the times I tear the abundant down <laughs> but he tries to make it right in this right here with that scripture number two the thanks and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. That's putting the gospel into the hands of faithful men and sending them out. In No Greater Love Ministries, you can ask Jeff, there's how many sometimes Jeff come together? 250? And it's a group of men that come together as one. And the amazing things that God really wants you to do is just unbelievable. If you were talking to somebody on the street, complete stranger, and asking a question I always ask, if you were to die this very instant, are you 100% sure you'll go to heaven? I had a young man. He was homeless. He said, I'm at the front gates of hell. I talked to him for a while, and I, I told him, I said, young man, I said, I tell you what, Jesus can set you free this very instant. And if he could set you free right now, you'd want that, wouldn't you? He said, yes, I would. He said, but I don't know how. I said, well, I'll tell you what. Just pray this prayer with me. When we got done, he was set free. He sat there and he cried and I wept with him. And the people that was with me, the whole group, we, they all come up and we put our arms around him. And loved on him. Guys, I'll tell you what. Showing a little love to people you don't even know can be amazing. How many times do you think in the lifetime you might have entertained angels? And never knew it. We probably won't know. 
till we get there. But it amazes me. The one thing was this guy was asking for money. And I didn't give none to him. This is the young man I'm telling you about, but just told you about. I walked down to the corner and we decided to move on to a different place. And as I started walking that way, God spoke to my heart. So I gave him something so he could buy him something to eat. And then that's whenever I asked him the question. And like I said, he had tears of joy all over his face. And he said, well, I'm not at them front gates of hell no more. It makes you so happy. If you've ever led anyone to Christ, you can see a transformation on their face. You can see the new creation instantly. Because I always ask them that same question a second time. To the ones that even told me, no, or I think so, or, well, I'm a good person and do good things. Whenever I ask them the question the second time, it's a yes. And then you ask them, what makes you say yes this time? And they'll say, I got Jesus. That's what this is all about. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, every morning, every evening, whatever time of day, when you open that book, it's all about Jesus. One thing about people, an easy way to talk to people, Four spiritual laws, so simple. God loves you. We've all sinned. Jesus died while I was a sinner. All we have to do is repent. So, so easy. So many times we overlook what we're doing. But all the way through all the scripture, God is speaking to each and every one of us. Whenever Jesus in Matthew 28, starting with verse 18, whenever he said, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go into the world and make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Guys, we're, we're, we're the ones that's supposed to be helping God. So many people don't know how to get to him. Don't know how to reach him. Don't know how to call upon him. That's why he has us, to help those people find the way. Every time I get to pray with someone, it makes my heart just flop, flip-flop. Because I love to watch the transformation on people's faces. And when you ask them, they say, man, I don't know what this is, but it sure does feel good. He's a healer. So many people want healed. And by golly, I want them healed too. But I will guarantee you one thing. If you've got Christ in your life, you're healed. You're never going to die. This old body I live in might be like Kevin's. That was our camp chaplain. God said to him, tired of your body, it's getting old. Time to come home. It's sad to lose someone. And it hurts. But whenever we stop and think about it, that's life. 
We need to learn to let God help us. I guess it was about 36 years ago, I lost my mother to cancer. Five weeks from that very day, I lost my brother to cancer. Did it hurt? Yes, it did. But with my mother, and believe it or not, with my brother, a little bit later on, it was a blessing. Because I watched my mother suffer for 18 months. The doctor had given her six months to live, and she lived 18 the last 12 months was horrible. I sit with her every morning till someone relieved me. I work straight midnights and I'd go there to help her, to try to help her up or anything, just to touch her hurt. But when she left, and also my brother, I was happy. I knew where they was going. Knew they was going to heaven. That's what we need to look at today. We know we're going to lose one another. Our only problem is God never told us when. We ain't going to know when. That's like December, December the 2nd. I think I told you it's all about it. I gave the welcome at my church, opening prayer. Stepped down from the pulpit and went to my seat and couldn't hardly get to my seat. Next thing I know, I'm in Carbondale Hospital having another heart cap. I had a heart attack. We never know. But we need to be prepared. Whenever we've had a long life, we've all had a good life. But how many things bother us? How many people have we forgiven? We need to learn to forgive. We need to learn to help. And I'll tell you what, helping is a lot of fun. I don't know how many times she's been in line at, believe it or not, McDonald's and saw somebody up front paid for whatever she ordered. I can remember we were in Denny's one day. It was right after I got out of the hospital, believe it or not. I had to cheat and put everything in my mouth you ain't supposed to. But God laid on my heart to buy this lady and man breakfast and this child. And I sat there, and every time I'd look, he'd say, buy their dinner or buy their breakfast. And I'd turn back around, and I'd look again, buy their breakfast. Finally, I said, God, in my mind, I'm going, give me a sign. I want to know if it's me or if it's you. It ain't 30 seconds later. Pam looks at me, my wife, and she says, you know, we should start sharing and helping other people out. And I said, I already know who it's going to be. And she says, who? I said, them people right over there. She says, yeah, how'd you know that? Because he was speaking to her, too. And that's how God works, guys. When you hear him speak to you, we need to start answering him back in the way he wants. I know I'm guilty of it. Probably will be again. But I like the blessings he gives when you do it for him. And the more we do it, the happier it makes us and makes us stronger in the Lord. That's just like that uh, uh, little clip I play for a lot of people. It's called Miracle on Jard Street from Australia. It's about a little old man that run a little shop there. And when he finally got saved, his life was a pretty, pretty mess. But when he got saved, he, he told God, he says, Lord, he says, I just want to tell 10 people a day about you. And what he'd do, he'd have a little break and he'd run outside and stick a track in these people's hand and say, if you were to die now, would you go to heaven? Insulted these people at the time. 
and they'd go back to someone, to their preacher or whatever, and the preacher would lead them to Christ. <laughs> Mentioned in one of them that one of the people was, was a, 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 an elder in the church. He went back to his pastor. And his pastor says, man, I've seen it for a long time. He says, man, I'm glad you finally come to the Lord. But the whole thing about it, this little old man did this to ten people every day. Some of the people that had got saved had went into ministry. A gentleman had heard about this at a conference that he was at. And these people kept coming up and saying, I was in Sydney, Australia, and walking down the street, and this little old gray-haired man come out and just took, give me the horriblest thing I'd ever want to hear. And he led me, to the, led me to the Lord. He had no idea that he had ever touched anyone's heart until one of the gentlemen that had heard so many times over and over about Mr. Geno that he had to go and find him. So he goes to Australia, and this little old man, he'd, he'd retired, his shaky body, was explaining what God had done in his life. And he began to tell Mr. Geno, because Mr. Geno said, I have no idea if I touched anyone's life. He touched millions of lives because he had so many people running ministries all over the world. In India, the Indians in India were coming to the Christ so much it was unreal. And it's because somebody telling somebody about Christ. You know, it might upset a lot of people, but that's all right. They might mock you. They might spit at you. They might give you a cussing. I've had it all. It don't matter. It don't hurt. Because Scripture tells us in the Proverbs, and I just forgot it that quick. I love having senior moments. It's, it's not in Proverbs. As a matter of fact, it's in Matthew in 5. Talks about, blessed are they that are pure, persecuted for his name's sake. You'll be blessed. Blessed. I love to be blessed. I enjoy the blessings. Enjoy the blessings. If anything today, I hope maybe I've stirred you maybe a little bit to try to learn to talk to people more. And talk to Christ. Because you'll not believe some of the things you can do. Jeff knows about my your name. I take an ink pen. And I write your name. I'll let God find someone coming at me. I'll let the Spirit lead me to someone. I'll walk right up to him. Out in front of him I go... My gosh, how long has it been? They always grab your hand. And he looks at you like this, look at you like that. I said, you don't remember, do you? Uh, I always make sure there's two of them. I like it when it's a man and a wife. He'll look at me and I say, really, you don't remember? What is your first name again? And he'll give me his first name and I'm going, oh, man. You, this is unbelievable. You're not going to believe this. But every day, whenever I get up, I get this name in my mind. And it's your name. And he'll go, you can't have my name. I say, no, I'm going to guarantee you I got your name in the palm of my hand. And I love to get his wife off to the side. And I say, am I not right? And usually they get a big grin on their face. And whoever I just shook hands with, he's going, you can't know my name. I said, man, I got your name. Is that not your name? Then they start laughing. We've made contact, guys. I can talk to that gentleman 
and that woman about anything. And after I get done with that, I ask him. I'm going to ask us all right now here. If you were to die this very instant, are you 100% sure you would go to heaven? Tell you what, if you're not 100%, God can make you 100% right now. It's so easy. Amen. 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 That's a passion that God put on my heart. It took a long time for me to learn how to, how to use the passion. But he always finds something for someone and teaches someone how to use something. The way I talk to people on the street, most of the people think, you are crazy. And yeah, I am. I'm a Jesus freak. That's what they want to call me. Because it don't hurt. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And being called a Jesus freak, I like it. I like it. Let us close. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Father God, I, I thank you for the words that you, you let me use. And Lord, I, I just hope that you be with each and every one of us here, Lord, to bring your blessings upon us and help us throughout our day. And Father God, I even forgot to ask if anybody was sick or feeling bad so we could pray for them. But Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, if there's anybody here that is sick, hurting, or whatever, I just ask in the name of Jesus that you lay your hand upon them and just bring healing to their body, Father God, and, and, and just make them feel so much better. And Lord, I, I just thank you for who you are. You waited around, Father God, and I was that lost sheep, and you came after me. You left the other 99 and come and got me, and I, I'm so happy for that, my Lord. Because I love the change in my life. But Father God, just may your blessings be upon each person here today. And Father God, let, let us all have a great fellowship after we're done. And I just give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's great. That's great.